Today we are starting a first installment of Break Free uh, series where we're going to focus on talking about uh, freedom, talk about renewing of the mind and talking about walking with God in the fullness as He intended us to do so. We are going to take a book of Esther as for the next few services as a way of learning about freedom from book of Esther and due to inability to read the whole book in front of us I'm going to just kind of summarize uh, the story of Esther that most of you probably are familiar with. The story of Esther goes like this that there was one queen named Vashti. She didn't show up to a request by her king by her husband and she got dethroned. She lost her crown and king was so popular and rich that he could afford to throw a beauty pageant just to find a wife and that's not a best way to find a wife but he could afford it. This was Old Testament. I guess it, it went well for him. He found this girl, a uh, Jewish girl. Her name was Hadassah and they changed her name to Esther. She lost her parents, both of her parents, to war. She got adopted by her uncle named Mordecai who also was in the like political world. He was serving with this king who was his like a captor and Hadassah whose name we know as Esther, she becomes the wife of this king and there was an enemy there in the palace. His name was Haman. Haman was a hater. He did not like Jewish people. He attacked Jewish people and so he wanted to wipe them out. So this whole thing of killing Jews and attacking Jews didn't start with Hitler. It started way 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 before that. There was always an attack on the Jewish people because of God's plan that God has for Jewish people. And so what happened is that Haman devises a plan and a plot to wipe them out and Esther steps in and intercedes and she gets the job done. Haman get, gets hanged, the plot gets reversed and Mordecai gets promoted and Esther is now known not just as a beautiful girl but also as a savior of her nation. So we just learned six or chapters of Esther in just a minute or two. The interesting part is Esther is the only book in the Bible that doesn't have word God in it. It has his fingerprints all over just not as mentioned. And so today we're going to uh, talk about uh, spiritual freedom and the message that will be titled is access denied or I like to call it access revoked where the access the enemy have had to our life is revoked. I want you to notice this. Esther was facing an enemy in the palace that was not actually her own enemy. It was the enemy of her great ancestors. Haman is a descendant of Amalekites and Esther is a direct descendant of the house of Kish who was the father of King Saul. When King Saul went to battle against the Amalekites, Amalekites he did not defeat them. He spared them. He spared the enemy and instead of the enemy just evaporating through time. The enemy resurfaced later on the descendants of Saul. Esther had to face the enemy that was her great, 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 great grandfather did not overcome. Many battles we face today did not start with us. They got passed on to us. But we have to face them. One time a girl uh, went to her mother says, mom, where did we come from? The mother says, we all came from God. She said, well, praise God. She went to her father. She says, where did we come from? The father says, you came from a monkey. She said, well, that sucks. She goes back to her mom. She says, mom, I'm confused. Dad says, we came from monkeys. You said we came from God. The mom says, well, it's very simple. I told you where my family came from. He told you where his family came from. I believe I know why some people believe they came from monkeys because they came from the family where stuff was just weird. We all have crazy families, right? And if your family is in church, don't say amen. <laughs> say no, he's talking about their family. Our family tree, even if you come from a Christian family, uh, we all have things in our families that, that, are, that are not necessarily Christ-like and they need, they need changing. And we have to understand this. Statistics says if you come from a family where your father was an alcoholic, your chances of being alcoholic or being prone to alcoholism is 10 times more than someone who grew up without an alcoholic father. The same thing applies to divorce. A lot of times same thing applies to diabetes and even cancer where it kind of like they, they say it runs in the family. Anger, divorce and other things. 
uh, they did even, even a study where they see that there are genes that are passed on you know we know like the color of your hair the color of your skin the color of your eyes and other things that you cannot stop they get passed on to you but there are things that are passed on to you that can be deactivated and these genes they lay dormant in you until activated by certain experiences by certain uh, mentorships or certain places that you go to and then because people can it does not necessarily mean that because you grew up an alcoholic home that you're going to be an alcoholic it's because you grew up in a great home that you're going to live great life we still have choices that we can make and today I want to address this issue because many of our battles have not started with us it started with someone else our goal today is not to blame King Saul of why he did not remove Amalekites. Our goal is to understand that the battle we're facing did not start today. It's been going on for some time. The greatest blessing you can give to your children is not your house or your car. It's a spiritual inheritance. It's a spiritual blessing that you pass on to them. A lot of parents are too worried, make sure they pass on an inheritance. But the greatest inheritance your kids will benefit from is a good character, good reputation, spiritual habits and a life free from bondages of Satan and sin and the devils. Can somebody say Amen. When me and my wife purchased a duplex in Richland, an older duplex, uh, within about the first year of our marriage, the person who sold us the duplex was a lawyer. He rented out this duplex to tenants and the yard was not up kept. The yard was not well kept. There was a lot of weeds. There were so many weeds. I, first time I was afraid to mow it because it was so high. I wasn't sure what, what, what's going to be there in those weeds. And so when I mow that you know yard the next week the weeds did not disappear. The weeds were still there and instead of you know I had a chance I could be angry at the owner the lawyer and say man he did not keep that yard and you know it's, it sucks it's not fair that I have to deal with all of this now but I knew that though I got past this this lawn got passed on to me I have to now put a little bit of more work I have to fertilize it remove the weeds and with time the weeds got pulled out we put the irrigation system planted trees and that yard looks so beautiful and when I sold that real estate property to someone else I still drive it once in a while in Richland over there and I see that lawn is is green that lawn is so different maybe that is your situation maybe something got passed on to you that's chronic diseases constant divorce and breaking of the finance of the family unit maybe what's been passed on to you is depression phobias and fears maybe what runs in your family is constant lack or poverty or maybe what runs in your family is accident prone means everyone always gets weird accidents or perhaps it's premature death or perhaps it's a terminal illness that just hits every family member and nobody ever stood against it resisted it and and brought that down instead they just kept passing it on passing it on and maybe it got so big that honestly you're already expecting everyone dies at 50 at 50 that's when you're gonna die I want to tell you something today you can change the lawn that, kept, that got passed on to you you can remove the weeds plant the seeds and fertilize it and you can pass on to your children a different legacy you can pass on to your children good health you can pass on to your children good morals. You can pass on to your children a blessed lifestyle, a generous lifestyle. You can pass on to your children something different that was passed on to you. Can somebody say amen? When King David was dying, he passed on to his son Solomon great wealth and riches. He passed on to him a throne and a great reputation. Israel enjoyed a great momentum and David passed all of that to Solomon. He gave him a blueprint of the temple. You know that Solomon didn't create the blueprint. David did. He just only had to build it. He gave him all the contracts and all the builders of who's going to build what and who owed favors to David. He did all of that. But what I love David for is not only he handed all the good things to his son. He also told his son Solomon, he says, when I become a king, something is going to happen. The enemies that I accumulated throughout my life who were at times my friends, my co-workers, people who were my buddies. He says they are not going to die or leave the country because I die. They actually will become your enemies. And David, excuse me, Solomon, I want you to deal with them accordingly. And David was very clear. He says don't let them die normal death. He says I want you to finish those enemies off. They're my enemies and sadly son, I'm passing them on to you. 
you know I believe every godly parent has some things they fight for fighting against there's nobody here who sits and you know what I'm perfect even if you're like David man after God's heart you still pass on certain habits that honestly you didn't conquer Abraham was a man of faith yet he had a little lying issue passed on to his son grandson great-grandchildren but what I love David for is not that he passed on blessings or he passed on bad things it's that David prepared his son and said listen deal with the stuff you get passed on he didn't say hey son uh, you know blame it on me he says no he says deal with it and the Bible says this before Solomon built a temple before he built a house before he did anything Solomon does this he goes in one after another and he executes the enemies of his father and when they were executed the scripture says this and Solomon was established I genuinely believe one of the reasons people are not established is because they have not dealt with their daddy's demons mama's demons grandma's demons grandpa's demons we live blaming people we live shifting the responsibility so well that's not my problem if they did it they didn't fight it and you know now it's unfair that I have to deal with this see Solomon didn't blame his dad he just challenged the enemy that was passed on from his dad and when he dealt with the enemy the Bible says he was established you want to be established in your relationships deal with your past I'm not saying glorify your past. I'm not saying go back to your past. I'm not saying blame your past. I'm saying deal with it. If certain tendencies are repeating in you that were in your dad or in your mom and they are not in the heavenly father, deal with it. Pull the weeds. Fertilize your lawn. If you're seeing a certain illness running rampant in your family, honestly stand up against it. You say, well what if I've done nothing happens? Stand up against it until something happens. Somebody say amen. some of our battles did not start with us that doesn't mean we blame people we take responsibility Esther conquered her ancestors enemy Solomon conquered his father's enemies so can you so can I if it's poverty if it's fear if it's barrenness if it's chronic diseases if it's financial lack if it's premature death if it's accident prone if it's depression or chronic anxiety whatever it is if they could do it and they didn't even have the blood they didn't even have the spirit of God indwelling in them we do your generational curse at are at disadvantage in front of you because you have a generational blessing standing behind you and the Holy Spirit says let's make things happen come on somebody come on somebody thank you Jesus hallelujah let's put our hands together for the Lord when the enemy appeared, when the enemy surfaced, Esther did not use political means to fight spiritual problems. I want you to write this down. Spiritual war can only be fought with spiritual ways. Spiritual war can be fought with spiritual ways. Esther, like every good politician, like a wife of a very powerful king, I'm, I'm pretty sure that her phone contacts had a lot of connections to governors, senators and people who were very good and very connected. She could have easily sent a mass text message say, hey guys I need to gather together. Uh, can somebody uh, put something in Heyman's food for tomorrow's breakfast? So he doesn't make it back to the office. I mean those days they took care of problems very uniquely. If you watch the history or anything of that sort. She could have used, used man manipulative political ways to solve a problem. I want you to see this. When the problem surfaces Esther does not run to physical means to deal with physical problem. She gathers the women together and asks Mordecai to gather the whole people together and says I want us to fast and pray for three days. No water, no coffee, no juice, like no liquid at all. Like when we fast we, we, we sip stuff you know. We drink things but nothing at all. And you must say man Esther she's cute and also smart. You know she's she's politically connected but she's not dumb she doesn't just see physical problem for a physical problem she knows that I know that Haman is connected and he presented well-versed plan to the king and sold him manipulated him showed him some financial data and everything you know she didn't say well if I just show to the king how the financial data is not really working if I bring the facts you know she says no no the first thing we need to do 
it's a physical problem but it has spiritual roots let's go into the spiritual realm and let's shake some roots up so when I show up to the king it's not going to be my facts that's going to move there's going to be a spiritual force behind me because I've dealt with spiritual problem most of our physical problems have spiritual roots and we have to be very honest with ourselves today to admit that the physical problem might have spiritual roots and in order to just instead of dealing with this physical problem financial problem relationship problem you have to go in and start dealing first with the spiritual I didn't say they're only with the spiritual but first with the spiritual can somebody say amen with prayer fasting all of these things it deals with the spiritual if we look in the Bible for example you see that some sicknesses in the Bible they were direct results of spiritual problems um, on, on average you will look at a woman who comes to church and she's been for 18 years and he will say she has a back problem Jesus looked at that and said she has a demon problem he cast out the devil and the woman was made straight there was one there was one person in the Bible they couldn't speak and they couldn't hear mute and dumb and you would say oh they have a speech problem but Jesus saw that the roots were way deeper than the speech problem the physical problem had a spiritual roots for example we can look at Judas and say oh Judas had a stealing problem or Judas has a problem with denying Jesus. Judas is a backstabber. But in reality, the scripture remo removes the scales and puts us that Judas had a demon problem. And the devil put in the heart of Judas to betray Jesus and the devil entered Judas. Judas didn't do what he did because Judas was bad. Judas did what he did because Judas has something going on behind the scenes. Ananias, he lied about what he sold the property for but the Bible says Peter rebuked Ananias. He said, why did you let Satan put in your heart to deceive to the Holy Spirit? Meaning it was a demon problem. I am not saying there's a demon behind every bush. It's probably behind every leaf. <laughs> Things are way more spiritual than we think. The world we live in existed only for thousands of years or if you believe millions of years but the world that we don't see existed for eternity. That world is eternal. That world is powerful. The world you see is very very fragile. This world is a baby. The world you don't see is the father. The world you live in, everything you're facing, a lot of times fatigue, depression, fear, certain tendencies. We always say always oh, physical and, and probably it is. But don't ever discredit to the ability and the possibility that you are in the spiritual world and the spiritual world has more effect than you than you give a credit to. I really want to just blow this deception of the enemy because the enemy is very cunning the first thing we see about the devil in Genesis chapter 3 is the Bible says and the serpent was more cunning than any other animal you know what that says devil's greatest gift is craftiness manipulative that's why Jesus said he's a thief uh, if you've ever been been stealing before in your life before coming to Jesus or before coming to church you know one thing about stealing in order to be a successful thief you have to remain anonymous and cover your tracks. You're only as good thief as you're able not to get caught. Nobody steals and posts it online. So devil's success is in damaging, stealing and destroying without you ever knowing or being able to connect the dots to him. And my goal today during this series is to shine the light and say listen there are tracks in your life and these tracks are not just yours. There's something else and it's not just you face the music face the enemy face the real real issue and those roots are spiritual otherwise what you're going to do is you're going to clean the spider web instead of killing the spider otherwise we're going to mow the lawn instead of pulling out to read uh, the, the roots that are weeds we're going to be like Balaam riding a donkey the bible says the donkey was moving sideways and then it starts it just dropped so Balaam just dropped on the floor with the donkey and Balaam took a rod bow 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 he's beating the donkey and he says if I would have a sword I would have killed you right now and the God opens the mouth of the donkey the donkey speaks back to the prophet and says hey listen fool have I ever done this to you what do you think I'm doing this on purpose 
and the Bible says God opens the eyes of the prophet and the prophet sees that the reason why donkey's been going this way and it dropped was not because the donkey was having an attitude problem the donkey didn't eat but because there was something spiritual standing there the donkey felt the pressure and it couldn't move forward sometimes our health our finances our children have a spiritual opposition and they misbehave they go like this and we what we love to do is we go beat it beat it beat it beat it now sometimes you need to beat it just a little bit it's not bad discipline a child you need to give him curfew yes you need a car you need counseling you need a therapy we need all of that that has its place but first of all remove the spiritual obstacle and then discipline the donkey can somebody say amen Put the filter on your phone if you're struggling with pornography but remove the demon of pornography first. Watch some comedy make yourself feel better but remove the spirit of depression first. If there is divorce take some marriage classes so that your next marriage doesn't end up like the previous but break the generational curse of divorce first. We're not saying that spiritual solves everything but spiritual is where everything begins first and then we go into practical. Can somebody say amen? And so Esther, she deals with the spiritual problem. Nobody, I don't know who taught her. The spiritual tools, weapons are as follows. The Word of God, the blood of Jesus, and the name of Jesus. It's not just our education, our appearance, our knowledge of the, our knowledge of the Bible, but it's the Word of God, the blood of Jesus, and the name of Jesus. What that means that these things, they're huge in the spiritual realm. Demons respond to the power of the blood of Jesus. The forces of darkness, they, they respond to the power of the Word of God and the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is so powerful. It's so powerful. We flippantly use it as sometimes as a charm or like this or this special phrase that, that does magic but it represents the Jesus. I sometimes use it as an example in our church um, because I um, I'm one of the pastors on the team here and so if somebody wants to get something done a lot of times what they do is they use my name and so they come up to that person and if they're trying to tell them say hey could you get that done they say no they say Vlad said and so Vlad said can open a lot of keys in the church for you <laughs> Vlad said give me this okay Vlad said give me coffee okay they'll, they'll get your coffee they won't even charge you Vlad said is a because why they know that behind that behind that Vlad's gonna come in and stuff and so at the one time even we had a person who um who spammed our core team and sent a scam who sent a spam and a scam for about 140 dollars because they represented Vlad on the email to them and they looked they, they looked so good I mean they appealed to their emotion they say hey I'm busy right now at the office I'm, I'm talking to this cancer patient and uh, would you uh, send me a hundred dollar iTunes card I'll refund to you on Wednesday at youth service Pastor Vlad, GNY2003, which is my email. And at the end, it had a dot. My email doesn't have a 2003 dot. It just has 2003. And so, but it, nobody paid attention to that. And it had Vlad in the, in, the, in the there. And in the bottom, I had Vlad. And then, and so what they did is they, people, our team started to send a person iTunes card to help with cancer treatment. Now, I'm not sure. Our team, I guess they just kind of <laughs> give money to iTunes thinking that it somehow connects to treatment. <laughs> Those things don't connect. And somebody sends me a screenshot he, and they said from our team they said Vlad do you need the um, uh, iTunes card for a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars and I said I don't need an iTunes card but I mean I like it but I don't need it. they said you're meeting with the cancer patient I said uh, not right now and they sent me the email so I look at the email and I said wow that's so con that's like me I look at the phrases and then I check the email and I see one dot there they didn't notice it and so then I write to that person who is using my name to scam people to take money from them and I said listen you're gonna get cancer he replied quickly and I was like listen if you are lying to people because of cancer I'm like be careful you will get cancer for that that's 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 you you're lying and this isn't bad and he says Pastor Lai, please pray for me <laughs> this never happens <laughs> and so I asked him you know the whole story and everything and so I, I forgave him and I cancelled those words from coming into his life I said but if you scam one more person from our team right now and he's like oh and I asked him how many people did he scam he says two people they sent him 70 dollars or something so it's 140 bucks using my name now if somebody can manipulate for selfish gain use someone else's name to get what they want Bible says that there were people who will come before God 
and who in his name cast out demons, healed the sick but didn't actually go to heaven. That means how much more? Listen, how much more is someone like you filled with the Holy Ghost, has a covenant with God, lives in the Word of God, lives under the authority of Jesus and you command that thing in your house to leave. That the Holy Spirit who you are close with will stand right beside you. The enemy has to flee. The enemy has to bow and you have to succeed. Somebody say Amen. Somebody give God praise for His name. Somebody shout Jesus. Come on you can do better than that. Shout Jesus. Come on somebody. When the plane goes through turbulence, nobody says Buddha. Everybody says, oh my God, <laughs> Jesus. Well, you can believe in whoever you want to believe. But when the plane is going down, there's only one name that's going to be coming out of your lips. It's that name that defeated death. It's that name that heals disease. It's that name that demons tremble in front of. That name. What is that name? What is that name? What is that name? Come on, make the devil mad. What is that name? Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. His name is Jesus. That, that is our weapon, is the name Jesus. That is our weapon, is the Word of God. That is our weapon, the blood of Jesus. But I want you to see, it's not mere shouting, mere professing. It's the power of the Holy Spirit behind that name. Because the Bible says the horse is prepared for battle but the victory is of the Lord. In other words, the Word of God, the blood of Jesus, name of Jesus is prepared for our battles. But the victory comes from the Holy Spirit. By Him, yoke is broken. Jesus says the Spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me. Even Jesus said the Holy Spirit helps me to break the chains. When demons came out of people, he says, and they said, oh, that, that's the devil doing it. Jesus says, no, 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 you blasphemy the Holy Spirit. Because he says, that wasn't just me, that was the Holy Spirit moving. See, when Esther went in to fight against these challenges, she had Mordecai behind her. Encouraging her, inspiring her, telling her what to do. Your Mordecai is the Holy Spirit. He adopts you into his heart. He is with you right now. Holy Spirit is not in heaven. He is omnipresent but his presence, manifest presence is with you. He comforts you. He loves you. He, he changes your name. He's always there to convict you. He's always there to inspire you and he is there to lead you on to a battle and train your hands for war and your fingers for battle. Holy Spirit is my best friend. Holy Spirit is my partner. Holy Spirit is the one I rely on Him. I shift the responsibility on Him. When life gets too heavy, I say, Holy Spirit, we got to share the plate. Because this is your job, Holy Spirit, this is, and I know He loves to take that from me and say, let me, you rest, let me fight the battles with you. The Holy Spirit is the partner in the spiritual warfare. We don't fight alone. We're not just given by God a tool, a weapon. We're given by God a person to stand right beside it as we use the weapon. I'm not alone just and I need to learn the tricks of how to pronounce God's word against the enemy. What's the right way to phrase things when things come against me? That is not where the secret is. The secret is I am together with the spirit of the living God. Yes I have the blood of Jesus. Yes I have the word of Jesus. Yes I have the name of Jesus at my disposal. I'm actually called by his name. But most important who I have it scares the devil like crazy and puts his tail between his legs is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says when Mordecai would come in, Haman would get provoked to anger. I believe that when the Holy Spirit's presence comes in, it irritates demons like nothing else. Because the Holy Spirit is the only, only one who can challenge the devil. You can challenge the devil with your religiosity. Knowing the Christian needs doesn't frighten the enemy. Having a long history of being in church, it doesn't move the spiritual world. What moves is the Holy Spirit and He lives in you. He lives in me. We have a Bible. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the name of Jesus. But that is not where our victory lies. What our victory lies is in the Holy Spirit. 
and if you may be shooting the scriptures and you feel like it's nothing working squeeze the hand of the Holy Spirit and say Holy Spirit I got you you got me and this battle is gonna be won it's already been won on the cross but it's gonna be won in my life come on somebody because it's one thing what victory happened in heaven victory happened on the Calvary but there's a final blow to the enemy it's when victory happens in your own backyard when it happens in your own health when it happens in your relationships when it happens in your own mind when it happens with your kids and see because the devil knows he defeated got defeated from heaven he got defeated at the Calvary but we're talking about one more blow and this is gonna happen with the Holy Spirit the, the, the third thing I want you to write this down something I'm already mentioning is access of the enemy can only be subdued by the authority of the believer as we see in the story of Esther the enemy had the access to the palace he had the ability to operate there he had the permission to work plot and plan but the enemy did not have a bed in the palace the enemy had an office but not the bed he had the access but not the authority he had the permission but Esther had a relationship the enemy came in and out Esther lived in the palace and so sometimes people say well if I am a Christian you know Christians can never get attacked by the devil it's true that as a Christian you have the Holy Spirit living in you and the enemy doesn't necessarily doesn't have a permanent residence in your spirit because your spirit is occupied by Jesus can somebody say amen the Holy Spirit lives there the King of Kings lived there and you are in a relationship with the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen but the enemy can have access to your soul where he comes in and ties a particular area of your soul temporarily or ties it one area everything else is good but just one area is under control he can come in and come out he can have the access but you have the authority you have the authority he can have the access but you have the authority the enemy can gain access through these means through occult through abuse through accursed things meaning if you bring something that's been devoted to the devil into your house or into your life or into your car or um <laughs> it's just kind of funny uh we were in, in mexico on the bus and uh we told the bus driver to drop us off at the dreams resort which was the hotel that we were staying in and so see see he's like yeah yeah for sure so i'm standing right next to him you know make sure he doesn't miss that and i'm noticing he has a dream catcher in the bus and i was like oh jesus protect us lord we cancel every assignment of the enemy and stuff so I kind of forgot about it we keep driving 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 the guy drops us off uh, about five miles away from our hotel now we spent all of our money on the at the beach gave some tips and everything so we only had enough money just to get to our hotel he drops off. he said oh I'm sorry senor I, I missed your dreams uh, um, dreams resort uh, you, you go out and go across the street and then take another bus I was like can you give me a receipt so I can go take another bus because I don't have money he said oh yeah I'll give you a receipt he gives me a receipt but the receipt wasn't a ticket so we get another bus the guy's like well this is a receipt it's not enough you need to pay and we don't have money and the only thing that's coming to my mind is the dream catcher I was like that cursed thing messed me up I was like should have ripped that thing out but a lot of times people bring dream catchers so they bring Ouija boards so they bring demonic material into their house and actually it gives Satan an access point you still can go to heaven but you might live in hell in here the enemy will have an access to your family to, to your life in some way shape and form because it's giving him an access key and you are a treasure that he wants to destroy and so a curse things is one of them generational curse or also a willful sin if somebody consciously willfully continues to sin gives an access to the devil to come in and to come out you, you might say well he doesn't live in me that is true as a Christian Holy Spirit lives in you you are in a relationship with God but Haman though he did not live in the palace he plotted against the palace he plotted against Esther and he was really wanting to destroy her life and so you can be a Christian have a relationship with Holy Spirit relationship with God but if you don't break the access of the enemy through repentance and renouncing the enemy can still have a part of your life that he's attacking and maybe you find yourself in that place today where you're you're a Christian but you're realizing man I'm a believer this shouldn't be happening but it's happening right now is it because I'm not a believer um let me ask you a question was Esther not genuinely married just because Haman was in the palace no her marriage was genuine 
her marriage was legit she had somebody who had access until a particular time that Esther realized we need to revoke that access we need to get that brother out and we need to cancel his code remove that from the system and so that he has no longer access to this palace and she went through fasting she went to the king she get him and she got a feast and she she got this whole thing until one day the bible says that when they were eating the enemy got on his knees in front of esther and the bible says this he was trembling all these big plans i'm gonna kill the jews went to what <laughs> and the king came in and he says are you trying to assault my wife my queen what that means he was pleading and begging that's the real position of the devil in your life <laughs> maybe right now that is your position but not for long we just need to swap the cards revoke the access break the chain but for that to happen you must understand you already have authority not when the devil is on his knees when he's thinking he's all big and that when you don't feel powerful you are powerful because of the holy spirit that lives inside of you when you feel like the world is falling apart and things are just getting worse and you may say well lad i prayed the prayer i've renounced it but it keeps coming back that haman is like you just can't get rid of him i want to tell you something keep on keeping on keep on fighting why because he has a rightful position and the bible says his rightful position is on his knees actually jesus is under our feet being trampled upon oh jesus trampled upon not trampling me and you but trampled upon come on somebody that is his rightful place that's where cancer belongs that's where depression belongs that's where divorce belongs that's where the cycle in the family belongs under my feet under your feet somebody say amen i want to encourage you right now i know that maybe sometimes when you're fighting something for so long and we're going to a church where maybe you're agreeing with your home group and others and you maybe you felt discouraged today maybe you felt like you know what if Haman wants to kill hey at least I'm gonna die a queen no 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 there is gallows prepared for him already to be hanged on you shouldn't be planning your funeral you need to plan your testimony you need to plan your victory because there is blood and there is power in the blood of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to raise people from the dead to raise you from your situation listen the demons still are going to hell the devil is still being defeated on the cross and you are victorious in God Esther you got authority and that authority trumps access it trumps Haman it defeats his plans and his plots today is a time to revoke the access stand on your authority but I want us to begin first by welcoming precious Holy Spirit he's here but to say Holy Spirit we need you a little bit more today it could be one touch of the Holy Spirit in this room and you will never be the same one moment where something goes through you will feel it like a like electric shock like a light buzz that goes in you walk out different and never never have that problem again because the Holy Spirit is your power and then I want to lead you in the prayer of repentance because some of us here today actually we have given Satan the access key you've given him the pin you've given him your social security and your passport your safe is in his pocket you've invited maybe willfully maybe you did not know that these things are, are not good for you and today we're gonna repent of that Maybe somebody abused you and you felt like it gave you a right to be bitter and offended. But today you're going to let go of that so that Satan's access key can be cut into pieces. And then we are going to confront the enemy. That whatever you came with today, you're not going to leave the same. I'm not here to do another service. We're here to do a victory. Fight a battle and live triumphant in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.